Hi guys, welcome back to the Department of Filtration. Today we're going to be looking at this uh, wheel filter here, which is a... Uh, I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it because I've never seen one before, but it's uh, a Maili. Or maybe it's just May... May... Male, not sure. Um, it's just not a common filter off the shelf in Australia. I was just searching around on the internet and I found this brand, thought it would be good to have a look at. Looks like it's made in Germany. Um, yeah, so it's not just a plain box with a single sticker on it for the part. The part numbers here, Hamburg, Germany. It's got a little tab on the top. Now what do we got? Installation by qualified personnel only. Oh yeah, we've got the possibly German there and then the English on this side, just installation instructions with the part number. Date code on the bottom. So it must have been sitting around for a while if it's 2018. Alright, it's got a nice plastic cover, which is good. Good to have. Gasket comes off fairly easily, but it looks like a nice thick rubber. It's nice and pliable. Get this back on. It sits nice and high above the edge there. Now it looks like it may be a fairly similar setup to the man filter that I did in my last video with the little folded tabs on the base plate. But we'll get it cut open and have a look. Okay, so I've got it cut open. And we look at the base plate. So as we saw when our last man filter, this has got a, a round edge there and then it's got a flat edge along the bottom and a tab that's folded up to hold the can against the base plate. Now unlike the man one, I'll grab that just to show you what it was like. The only other one I've seen like this. You can see it's got three tabs and it's a loose in the but it's got four square sides to stop it turning. This one doesn't appear to have any square sides, but it's got more tabs and I'm not sure, but it doesn't. That may also be glued. It's quite hard to tell, but I'm not sure. This might just be added security rather than a primary way of securing it. In terms of threads, we've got plenty there. There's five, and they look very nice. Well cut threads. Any drain back valve has got very nice and thick. Very thick, especially in the middle there. And in terms of fitment, it's really, really good on there. You gotta press it down in there, it stays on really well. Covers up those holes nicely. It's really and on the element end. 
That's also a really nice fit. We can let it stay on there too. So that's very nice. I like that valve a lot. That's one of my best ones I think I've actually seen. So that's nice. That element very tight in the can. Right up, right up against the edges. Take a look at that can because that feels really thick as well. Down in there. We're definitely looking in the 0 0.6, 0 0.7 range. So that's really quite a thick can. It's no imperfections or anything in it. It's quite nice actually. Really thick can. Check out this coil spring. That's got a fair bit of thickness on it too. We're looking at uh, 2.7 mil, almost 3 mil. Real heavy duty. Doesn't fit in the bottom of the element the nicest. But it's not very loose. And the size of the can that fits nicely on the indent that it's got. So that's good. I like the spring. Now, element itself looks quite good as well. We've got another rubber rubber coated coil spring bypass valve down there. Now, tabs to keep it centralised in housing, which it does really nice. It's really tight. Very nicely spaced plates with a metal crimp seam. Centre core with holes. So let's get this media cut out and take a look at it. Alrighty, so we got this media cut out and it comes to about 1.4 metres long. And our width is... 85 mil. Now it appears to me to be straight cellulose. No, not really any synthetic blend or anything like that. Um, we'll put some under the microscope now and have a look at it. So that's our media under the microscope. It looks quite good to me. No issues with it. Just a standard, well-made cellulose uh, media. Now our centre core here is where things just change a little bit. Um, they got pl plenty of glue on there. A little bit extra, but that doesn't matter. It's better than not having any. And we've got our spiral wound core with center with holes. One thing that lets this filter down is indeed the holes. See if I can find an example for you. Sometimes it's a bit hard to see on the camera, but you can see how these holes, like this one here, have, see my fingernail gets caught on the edge, you've got to have a bit of an edge on them where they've been drilled or punched or whatever they do with them, and you see around each hole there's a bit of a raised bit, which if I run my finger down the inside, isn't there. The really thing that's disappointing about this is, well, first I will get my bit of media and I'll tell you what happens. So we saw the element there, it's got all these pleats in it all the way around. 
this media. It's just paper. It doesn't have any wire back or anything. And when the oil's rushing through it, it sort of moves a bit like this. And the elements move around and they go back and forth. You can imagine this here acts like a cheese grater. So if you keep on rubbing that back and forth over and over again on one particular joint, you know, over time, it's going to wear away at it. And then you end up with that. It's been able to see in the light. You see where it's there and then rubbed it, it's become fluffy. You can see it there and then over time that opens up and then that becomes a hole. And then you end up with heaps of little holes in your media because they've moved back and forth. The really disappointing thing about the filters like this is if they just wound the centre core the other way, it wouldn't be an issue. Because down on the inside, I can run my finger down in there and they just feel perfectly smooth. I'll see if I can break this. I'll see if I can get this centre cap off and I'll show you. Okay, right, so I've got that cap off and you look down there. You can see that the holes on the inside don't have any nasty edges or anything. It's because it's been, when it's been punched, it's been punched through that way. So all the material has gone and splayed out on the inside. Whereas if they had have punched it that way but then rolled it in a spiral the other way, then it would be real nice smooth holes up against the filter and you have no worries. Just like, so I was saying before, this man filter. Look how nice and smooth the edges of those holes are. They're just really nice. And on the inside, you can see all those rough bits that had cut the media. But they've thought about that and they've wound it the other way so that it doesn't rub and tear on the media. So to me, that's just really disappointing. I like every single part of this filter apart from that. You've got a really nice solid can. Very nice. Big solid base blade that's well attached. Heaps of threads. A big thick rubber gasket that's nice. A superbly fitting anti-drain back valve. And I'd say that's probably going to be the best I've ever seen that valve. I really like it. Big old coil spring. Doing a good job. Quite a fair amount of high quality filter media. No, a center metal center core with a metal end caps. Plenty of glue. But yet we've got an inside out wound core. Which is going to rub and tear that media. Which means um, that over time it's just going to degrade to a point where... It before it's service into full, it's probably just not even going to be filtering any oil. It's just going to be going through holes. And I've seen that in filters before that I've pulled off my own vehicles that have been poorly designed. I cut them and seen that they're worn, just like this here. Worn little strips right on the edges from where they're rubbed. Um, so there you have it. Quite unfortunate that it has that particular feature after really impressive amount of filter. I don't know whether companies like this always wind them the same way or if some are like this and some are the other way, but there you have it, folks. That is the mainly. Uh, 100 115 0009 oil filter.